is it just recency bias, guys? Or does Jones versus Aspinall sound right right about now? At the beginning of the year, it was all about Ngannou versus Jones. A few months ago, it was Jones versus Pavlovich. That was all the talk. A few weeks ago, we were told Jones versus Miocic is booked for USC 295 in November uh, in New York. But if Jones wins and decides to continue fighting, what would you like to see next in that division? Goes, you lead off. I think we all have short memories, you know, when it comes to these types of situations. Like Espinal did look great. He sure uh, did. But there's a lot of time that we have to wait to get to John versus Stipe, right? And when that happens, John has to win the fight. He has to win the fight over arguably one of the greatest heavyweights that ever lived. Now, we haven't seen Stipe for a long time. We don't know which guy's going to show up, but our, it's still going to be a tough matchup, all right? So when that happens, then we got to hope John's healthy to get into another one. Like, I, I just feel like, you know, we're, we're going to see Aspinall. We're going to see Pavlovich again. They're not going to fight each other. I promise that. But I think we're going to see him. And um, it, it's like the heavyweight division, it goes in phases. And right now, I think what's popping is that smaller guy that's quicker, but can still pack a punch. And that's what you get out of Pavlovich. That's what you get out of Aspinall. I think that's what makes things a little interesting when you're talking about John Jones, because we're trying to figure out different styles that can actually take this guy on with uh, Francis Ngannou gone. You know, it's, I'm not going to say it's slim pickings, but it's definitely uh, a little less on the experience. Even if you go to a guy who we just beat in, in a surreal gone, like there's not a lot of experience out there. So we have to look at these things now. When you really break it down, we've been doing this shit for years, haven't we? Trying to figure out who's going to beat John Jones, what style is going to beat John Jones. Whatever we bring up, he has an answer for us. So chances are he's probably going to have an answer. But I'll tell you what, you can't beat Father Time, and eventually this dude's going to have to start to slow down a little bit. And guys like Aspinall, guys like Pavlovich, they're the ones that can maybe be right time, right place to take advantage of that. But for me, I still feel like Pavlovich has a little bit of a lead as far as who I think can take out a guy like John Jones. He has a little bit of a lead over Aspinall, but Aspinall does seem like he's still getting better. Well, the Englishman says he will be front row for Pavlovich versus gone. Uh, I like the way he laid things out, but even better, I like the way he performed on Saturday. All right. How about you, Danny Segura? Was Aspinall, you know, did he become a, a front runner here in the possible Jones sweepstakes after Stephen Miocic? In fact, answer me this. Should who should be the uh the substitute or whatever we call him, the backup? Maybe, maybe uh Pavlovich, that way he's a two-time backup <laughs> fighter. You know, that's I think that there might be some history there. I don't know, especially if it's back to back. But look, no, I, I love Aspinall. I think he looked great. Uh clearly he is. Um, as you mentioned, George, kind of the the new style of fighting at heavyweight. We've seen Cyril Ghosn kind of be the pioneer of that a bit, but it seems that Tom Aspinall is a little bit more complete. He's got the quickness. He's got the speed. He's agile. But he also has wrestling and grappling as well, something that Ghosn doesn't have or at least hasn't shown it to this point. Um, so, yeah, he does definitely seems to be like the, the I guess, new heavyweight two point. 2.0 or whatever you want to call it but I, I don't think he's yet at a point to be challenging for john jones and even aspinall recognize that like yes that's his dream but he's going to show up in paris and try to take on uh the winner of, of gone versus spivak so i think he knows there there needs to be some work there and from a john jones standpoint like yeah i would love to see john jones fight aspinall but i would love to see john jones fight anybody and i think the fight to make is always going to be francis and ganu so long, friends and Ganu or John Jones, you know, don't have a decline and then they start losing. But as long as those two guys keep winning, that's the fight to make. Let's not make any mistake about that. So, yes, Aspinall is obviously a, a, an attractive fight, a good fight for John Jones. But there's so many fights that are interesting for John Jones. So, again, I'm all in. We'll see if John Jones sticks around long enough to see Tom Aspinall become a title challenger. I would say no, because after beating Stipe, Legacy wise, there is very little to gain unless you somehow find a way to fight in Ganu. And money wise, I, I would assume he's been making uh, a ton of money plus this new contract that he got with Francis and Ganu gone. I'm sure it's it's pretty, pretty stacked, pretty fat as well. So um, I don't think money is going to be an issue for John Jones. But look, never say never. We know that fighters in general just have the tendency to stick around. A, a bit longer past their prime. They get a little greedy. Those checks are coming in uh, nicely, you know, at the end of their career when their name is the biggest. So maybe we see it, but um, I, I, I'm 
I would, if I were a betting man, I'd, I'd say John Jones retires after if he beats Stipe Miocic. I think he retires from the sport. All right, good stuff from Danny Segura. Now, Father, you were live at the O2 Arena in London, so you got to see a live version of my man floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. I mean, he looked great. He made me forget about Ngannou versus Jones. Of course, I still want to see it, but Ngannou's signing to fight Fury. I'm thinking he's doing that, and now you know Jones has some possible uh, opponents how about you what were your thoughts uh on that matchup and and do, do, you know do you feel like me like maybe Aspinall might have stolen the show and moved up a couple spots here well look I don't know if he even got touched against Martin Tabora so he had a, an incredible showing he was coming off of an injury last year uh, obviously an unfortunate uh, outcome against Curtis Blades 18 seconds in blowing out his knee so he had a lot that he was dealing with going into the fight with Tabora uh, he looked incredible, got the quick finish. He even said he was expecting this to be a five-round battle, and I almost weirdly think that would have done him better just because those are kind of the question marks that were going into that fight. What if Tabora drags him into deep, deep waters? What's Aspinall going to look like in the championship rounds? Now, I can't blame him that he's putting these guys away so quickly. But, you know, he knows it himself. You know, he said he's going to fly to Paris, and he wants to fight uh, the winner of Spivak and Gan. I think he should have called out Sergei Pavlovich because that's the guy that was the backup and that's the guy yeah. that was supposed to fight for the belt had Stipe uh, not been around. So um, I think he should have called out Pavlovich when he was asked about that. He said, look, I've been booked against him twice and he withdrew. So maybe he just doesn't trust uh, that this matchup is going to happen if he's booked against him. But I think that's the call out he should have made because Pavlovich is the guy that got people excited for a second. Like, look at this guy putting people away so quickly uh look at the power he's got in his hands what if he touches jones blah 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 so i think that's the call out he should have made i feel like he almost took a little bit steam off of his own win by going after the winner of of gan and St uh, spivak uh not because of anything i mean spivak is very underrated and gan obviously you know he's been in the title picture quite a bit recently and he has a lot of uh good wins in the heavyweight division former interim champion but i don't know i feel like momentum wise you should have gone after that pavlovich uh, call out that's just me but again like i said he explains his reason he said he'd be down for pavlovich fyi but yeah. um you are kind of knocking off a contender though when you do that so that would kind of be my only issue and maybe why the ufc potentially wouldn't go that direction but then again is john jones even sticking around that is the question man can can i ask you guys something like not just you guys but the chat room if that fight were to happen i don't think they would do it because they would knock off a contender but if Aspinall and Pavlovich won, who would you lean towards? Do you want me to? Me, I can. Uh, because of the grappling, I would I would say Aspinall. Now, I'm not going to look back at Pavlovich's UFC debut against Overeem and, and hold that against him because that was such a long time ago. But I think uh, Aspinall, maybe I would say, is the uh, more complete fighter. But again, uh, Pavlovich has shown us that he's got that uh, touch, uh, touch of death. So uh, I don't know. But... Um, I don't know. I think Aspinall, just because of his grappling, I would lean towards him. But both of guys have been putting guys away so quickly, so I can't even lean on an experience or uh, factor. So just purely based on, on the matchup, I'd lean Aspinall. Let's go to another member in the panel, George in Las Vegas. George, what do you think? <laughs> well, I don't like them two guys killing each other off, for sure. Um, so I would not book Aspinall versus Pavlovich. I think we need a future to the heavyweight division because it is possible Jones could move on. But it nowadays, who knows what these fighters are thinking? If they're just if that's their, I don't want to say lame, but sorry excuse for negotiating tactics. You know what I mean? And by sorry, I mean the UFC's made it that way. Like it's not someone that has a guaranteed contract and just can honor it and they're happy about it. Instead, they realize that after every fight, they're popping just a little bit more. And now they want to cash in. Who knows? Like Danny makes a good point. Okay. I, I know what he meant. Cause I didn't want to like play a gotcha moment, but obviously Miocic, I think is five years older than Jones. So he's really the older guy here, but Jones has been doing this for a while now. And a lot of times it's wear and tear, you know, not, not so much, uh, your date of birth that we kind of talk about. And I think for Jones, that's what it's been is he's just been doing it for such a long time and at a high level for such a long time. I mean, think about how many championship fights the guys had. A lot of them have gone to the, to, uh, the whole 25 minutes. So it's like he's had a lot more fights than others have. But who knows? Because like he also said, 
these are some big checks these guys start to cash when they get towards the end. And I still believe, guys, that there needs to be a stadium fight here in Las Vegas now that we have a stadium with a roof. That means we're not sitting there thinking, oh, we can only do it this part of the t- uh, of the time because it's too hot or monsoon season or it's too cold. No, we can have a proper fight here in Las Vegas. They don't even have to play the game about I think back Croke Park. Remember when they used to talk about it, why they wouldn't go to London and sorry, uh, Dublin. And it used to be like just getting all that production over there. It was going to be very, very expensive. And anyway, since it, it, neither Jones or Jones or McGregor has to headline that stadium here in Las Vegas when they do it. And uh, McGregor has even jumped back into the pool. Jones is now threatening retirement. That's the part that bums me out the most. Goes And now ngannou has gone. I thought he was another one that could have done it. Diaz is gone. I'm sure he can come back. But it's just ridiculous to me because I thought Dana was all in on once that stadium was built, he was going to beat Mayweather or any boxing superstar to having a show there. And they haven't. And I've seen some great stadium shows go off for KSW in Poland. Boxing, we had um, Klitschko versus Joshua. That was epic, guys. You know, mm-hmm. and, and and the UFC thinks had like four of them themselves. We got to get it. We just got to get it. But I went to your restaurant and ordered chicken parm, and you just gave me spaghettios. You didn't even answer my question. But what was the question? Aspinall or Pavlovich? Who wins that fight? Who wins the fight? Okay. Um, at this point, I like Aspinall a little bit more. I think he's more well-rounded, like Fada said. But I'm telling you, there was something. And I, I know JD, for like the 10th time, has mentioned in the chat that his head movement's lacking, right? But look, this guy's exploding right and he really moves around well uh he has great footwork and look there right there i saw some nice head movement to avoid avoid that point so i wouldn't say he's got zero head movement but a lot of the times i mean this guy's just going in on it you know and with four ounce gloves you know he's trying to make he's trying to wonder whether he can get like look at him a clinch uh a muay thai clinch or maybe deliver a knee right there you know what i mean so i, I don't know that we've seen enough to, to just put that label on him necessarily but i really lean towards Aspinall. i think he's just more well-rounded and i really love the way he moves around and his hand speed is amazing so that's who i would go with go sorry about the spaghettios <laughs> i'm gonna go pavlovich too how about you danny i'm gonna go aspinall but if if we want to switch this around and, and instead of what'd you order again <laughs> i ordered chicken parm instead of chicken parm i'm gonna give you some empanadas um, if I want to sort of, re, you know, change the question around, be like, who is the biggest threat to John Jones? If John Jones obviously stays as champion, uh-huh. I, I think I'll go with Pavlovich. Um, I think technique for technique, you're not going to beat John Jones. I think you're going to have to rely a little bit. And I, it sounds a bit disrespectful, but on the lucky punch. Um, and man, uh, if anybody can maximize sort of that lucky punch uh, factor, that puncher's chance factor, um, it's got to be. Pavlovich, right? Like his power, his speed is is unseen at heavyweight. And also he's got this thing that goes beyond just the physical. It's kind of this I don't give an F attitude in the sense that um, I can see a scenario and I'm not saying this will happen again, all respect to Aspinall, but I can see a scenario where, you know, he talks so highly of John Jones that maybe the moment does get to him and he underperforms or or just isn't himself. But like when it comes down to Pavlovich, I feel like you put anybody in there. I mean, you can bring Muhammad Ali back somehow like, you know, from from in a time machine prime and he still wouldn't show him any respect. It just seems like Pavlovich just goes in there to put you out. And I feel like that's kind of what's needed to to beat a guy like John Jones. So um, I'll pick Aspinall to beat um, Pavlovich. But if who has the better chance in beating John Jones, I'll go with Pavlovich, if that makes any sense. 